Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Good evening. Mr. Rickerman? Here. Mr. McDowell? Here. Mr. Duvall? Present. Mr. Vine? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? Here. Um, would you all please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance. Red McDowell, would you please bless us with a word? This is an exciting time in the life of this city. And in the course, and of course, in the lives of many persons, youth, students. So we pray tonight that sensitivity and a sense of oneness and unity be a part of our deliberations tonight. We want not what is best for me or for any one person on this dais, but for this city of ours. Will you bow your heads with me for just a moment? For all you've done for us, for the blessings you've already bestowed upon us, for this city of ours, for all the positive things that continue to happen in this city, we simply ask that you might touch us tonight individually and collectively. Allow a sense of unity be our purpose. Allow the issues that we discuss tonight and discern each to the other might touch and penetrate our hearts. But we know that sometimes hard decisions are hard but we know that there is purpose and favor in every decision that we make. Rekindle us, renew us, and allow us to sense your presence. We ask it in your name, amen. amen. Thank you, Red McDonald, huh? I did, I did too. The, uh, Mr. Acting City Manager. Our next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, yeah, so move. All right. All right. It's second. Second. In discussion with the previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yeah. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Next item is public input related to agenda items. We'll have the zoning public hearing, huh? At seven. I'm sorry? Mr. Duval? Yeah. Uh, they were supposed to be a lady from Waccamaw coming to speak. Written an item on the agenda. Waccamaw. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of the January 16th meeting. Uh, moved in Mr. Rickman, seconded by Mr. McDowell. Any discussion? Saying no, move the previous question. The clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell, yes. Mr. Duvall, Aye. Mr. Vine, Mr. Davis, Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Uh, uh, I think a point of personal privilege, and the Chief Holbrook, I think, is uh, in, the, in the back somewhere. Uh, many of you know that uh, we've been, um, uh, this is a, a week in which a number of our students all around the country are, are coming together to talk about youth violence and, 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 and gun violence. And I just wanted to share a, a, a brief video uh, uh, in that regard showing some of the work being done at our local high schools. I would never bring a gun to school. I would never use a gun to set a personal problem or dispute 
I will use my influence with friends to keep them from using guns to settle disputes. My individual choices in action when multiplied by those of young people throughout the country will make a difference. Together by honoring this place, we can reverse the violence and grow up in safety. Go Shamrock! Rock. This is, of course, at Eau Claire High School, and the Student Pledge Against Gun Violence is something that we're going to be encouraging students to sign on Saturday uh, when uh, a number of them will be on, on Main Street, encouraging every school in, in the city to, to do the same, recognizing that we all have individual responsibilities to keep our, our, our schools safe. So I just wanted to um, highlight uh, the good work going on at Eau Claire High School. Uh, Mr. City Manager. Our next item is uh, we ask for your approval for the consent agenda items 9 through 23 move approval of the consent agenda items 9 through 23 second Any discussion yeah, mr yeah. rickman yeah i had a uh, several items i uh, wanted to get some clarification item 11 13 and 16 on 11 i wanted to confirm we had to uh, approve some fencing money, money the other day. Was that included in this or was this added to it? Because I thought it was for Earlwood Park. I just was surprised to see this on the agenda as well. Remember, we added a hundred thousand dollars. Yes, sir. That hundred thousand that was out of uh, hospitality tax money. That is a part of this three hundred eighty nine. It's part. It was part of his complimentary. It is okay. It just mm -hmm. wasn't listed sorry, that way. Three hundred nineteen. And then on 13, I wanted to make sure, did what happened, it looks like we had a vendor area uh, error. Did that cause us, or do we have any liability with that or, or are we fine to move forward with that? I think that's under you, Robert. Where is the side loaders. <laughs> Okay, we that's all been worked out. We don't have any liability. All right, thank you. And the last was, I just thought it was important, uh, Clint, as we continue to do these these programs in water and sewer in these large amounts, just to to explain to folks what we're doing here and why it's so important. Yes, sir. We're um, we're very excited um, on the heels of um, of the stormwater fee increase from from last year and it's effective this year to be hiring a program manager to help us implement some of these capital improvements and this is the award of, of the first year of that contract and so um, they're going to be providing a lot of services that are, our citizens are going to recognize and see and helping us implement that program to make improvements to our stormwater infrastructure so we're, we're really excited and, and grateful for this. David, do you have anything to add to no, that? Was actually, okay, if there's any other questions. Thank you for that. All right, good. All right. Uh, who the previous question? Carl, Carl Rowe. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Uh, item 24 is our first presentation. It is the February 2018 Employee of the Month. It will be presented by Mr. David Brewer, our city traffic engineer. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Hey, David. Bailey. I'm here this evening to introduce the February 2018 Employee of the Month, Mr. Byron Jasper. Byron's been employed by the city since November of 2000. He started out as an entry level electrician and he's moved up since then to senior electrician. Byron's one of those people that always arrives at work early. He pursues excellence in his job duties and during his time with the city, he's earned a master electrician license. He has strong initiative and he's meticulous in his work. In addition to his uh, job with the city, Byron's a veteran of the South Carolina National Guard. And during his time at the city, Byron was deployed to Afghanistan for a year where he uh, earned the Army Commendation Medal. 
He understands teamwork and promotes this attitude with the other employees. And when there's a problem with a signal at night or on a weekend, Byron is one of those guys we call on to leave his warm house and go out and fix it. Even when he's not the one on call duty, he can always be depended on to come out and help whoever is. Please welcome our February Employee of the Month, Mr. Byron Jasper. Always excited to have Firefighter Appreciation Month. Uh, in, in that spirit, uh, the, the chief uh, did ask me to remind everyone that we have a full house tonight. I, was, I think I was supposed to start the meeting off like that. I'm sorry, chief. Um, so uh, if, in fact, we are required to evacuate uh, the space, uh, please listen to your uh, firefighters uh, as they try to escort us out of the building. Is that sufficient, chief? All right, good job. You want, you want to come on up? Um, uh, come on up. Um, obviously, um, well, we have this opportunity each year. Um, whereas firefighters have one of the nation's most hazardous professions requiring physical strength, stamina, extensive training, courage, and selfless commitment to protecting our citizens. And whereas firefighters throughout South Carolina and across the nation, in addition to their daily service to our communities, have devoted their personal time to a number of community service projects and have joined the Muscular Dystrophy Association for over 60 years in the fight against newer muscular diseases. And whereas the Muscular Dystrophy Association is extremely grateful for the Columbia firefighters whose 2008 Fill the Boot campaign will assist them in providing medical education seminars at no cost to local children and families. And whereas the Muscular Dystrophy Association is sponsoring Columbia Firefighter Appreciation Month for the month of March 2018 in honor and recognition of the tireless efforts and dedicated service of Columbia's firefighters. And whereas the City of Columbia joins the Muscular Dystrophy Association in this tribute to our firefighters and thanks them for all they do to serve the people of Columbia. Now, therefore, I, Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, among my fellow members of Columbia City Council, do hereby proclaim March 2018 as Columbia Firefighter Appreciation Month in the City of Columbia. We urge our fellow citizens uh, to recognize and participate in its observance. Chief. Thank you to our firefighters. How about that? And to the best fire chief in the world. How about that? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What you got? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, Mr. Palin, to all the great citizens of both Columbia and Richland, we are so honored to receive that um, um, award. We're here on another purpose as well, um, not only to honor our firefighters, but to also <clears throat> talk about the MDA boot drive. Uh, that is coming up this week, um, beginning tomorrow, uh, Thursday and Friday. And I'll tell you, this is a special year. The reason why it's a special year because we are right on the crest of the, right on the tip of collecting over $3 million uh, for the last 16 years. So we want to get pushed over the top over the next three days. 
and our goal is to reach that three million dollar mark. Uh, last year we collected just under over a little over 130,000, and hopefully we can collect that this year as well. Um, it is a very good cause. Uh, we love doing it. I tell you, this is something that every firefighter looks forward to every year um, to get out there on the street. <laughs> You know, I told Mr. Duvall since, you know, we can't collect on the street from now, we're going to collect from y'all tonight in council. <laughs> um, he so, also said it was a $20 charge. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's $20, but we'll take anything over five. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we are just so delighted to have with us the Beverly family. Um, boom. We are so proud to be collecting this money for um, as, as uh, the Beverly family. So we're so proud to have them stand up here with us. We also have with us the executive director, uh, Mr. Watts, and I would like to give him space at this time. Thank you, Chief Jenkins. Thank you, City Council. We are very fortunate to live in a community where we're kept safe by such fine firefighters in this community who not only keep us safe day in and day out, but they go above and beyond to make the community a better place to live. There are over one million people in the United States living with a diagnosis of muscular dystrophy. About 40% of them are under the age of 18. We're fortunate enough to have tonight the Beverly family, Stacy, Brad, and Gresham. I'm gonna ask Stacy to come forward and just speak a moment about their diagnosis and their journey. And again, thank you for your continued support of this program. I would like to add that the Columbia Fill the Boot program is in the top 15 programs of fire departments across America, and they're number four in the Southeast. So we have significant leadership with Chief Jenkins and his team, and we're very grateful. This is Stacy and Gresham. Good evening. First, we'd like to thank y'all for having us tonight. Um, this is Gresham. He's our seven-year-old son, and he was diagnosed at approximately 20 months with a rare form of muscular dystrophy. It actually falls under congenital muscular dystrophy, where his muscles don't make mirsome like we do every day to be able to do what we can do. Um, Gresham attends, we actually live in Lexington, but he attends public school. He's in first grade. He's thriving at Rocky Creek Elementary School. He loves to do just anything that all these boys and girls in here enjoy to do. He is in karate. He plays piano. Um, we're very active members at Mott Horb, where he is a Cub Scout there as well. Um, he has uh, played t-ball in the Miracle League, and last year was his first year to go to camp. As a mother, as I'm nervous now, but I was devastated. I was like, oh my God, he's gone to camp. They're, they're not. Are they going to know how to do his breathing treatment at night? Are they going to know how to put his cough? his vest on to cough him and we were very nervous about letting him go but he had a fabulous counselor and Miss Ashley and he cried to leave um, I cried while he was there <laughs> <laughs> and but when we went to pick him up on Friday I mean he was ready to go he was six when he went this year they have changed age a little bit because I, I mean that's hard to send a six-year-old away for a whole week at camp but um, he cried to leave and that speaks volume of the things that he can he could do at camp that he can't do every day um, in life sometimes and he wants to speak for a few minutes does this come off absolutely oh, i don't know which one. does it just i just don't want to mess it up hello hey hey Camp is like, it's like all of us have something different inside us. And we all have a talent. And that talent for me is camp. And, and it's like a whole world of their own kind that you get to do the funnest thing that other kids get to do 
they like can't get to do like archery, uh, paddleboarding, canoeing, sleeping in cabins, um, uh, rock climbing, go, um. Thank you so much for my support. Gresham, you have no idea how often grown-ups get to that microphone and are too nervous <laughs> to say a word. You did an excellent job, young man. Excellent job. Congratulations. All right. Again, Brad and I just would like to thank everyone for their support in the Columbia area and all around to help send these kids to camp because there's lots of expenses that go along with muscular dystrophy, and we just appreciate everyone's support. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bella. All right. All right. Uh, Mayor, City Council, we, we thank you all, and we know how much you all want to be a part of getting us to that $3 million mark. So we actually brought a boat tonight. They're going to ask our young man to take it around. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would help him take the boat around. You know, Mr. Mayor, I think they ought to pass the boot around because all these people have taken up all our time. You know? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mayor, I have finally figured out the formula. What's that? If I want to increase in my budget, I'm going to bring a kid with me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't count on it, Chief. <laughs> He's collecting. He's collecting for me. He's collecting. Look at that. Yeah. Daniel. Good hustle. Money. And Chief, uh, I think you want to tell people if they are so moved, there will be a boot outside the door. All right, all right. <laughs> if, if, if you're feeling the spirit, uh, there's an opportunity for everyone to contribute tonight. Again, Gresham, fantastic job, fantastic job. Okay, okay, fantastic. Thank you. you know, um, take a moment to present our Earth Hour uh, proclamation. Uh, the, um, obviously, the World Wildlife Fund on March 24th, 2018, at 8.30 p.m., I was asking individuals, businesses, governments, 
and organizations around the world to turn off all non-essential lighting for one hour, one hour, um, Earth hour, to make a global statement of concern about climate change and demonstrate their commitment to finding uh, solutions. And whereas the City of Columbia has taken steps to go beyond Earth hour to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and increase energy efficiency, including purchasing hybrid vehicles and expanding recycling programs, whereas climate change is one of the top environmental issues of the 21st century, the United States is one of the largest contributors of greenhouse gases with nearly five times the world average in carbon emissions. And whereas in observing Earth Hour, it's important to think of ways to serve energy year-round and help reduce the carbon footprint for future generations. And whereas the City of Columbia challenges all local businesses, organizations, and individuals to take part in Earth Hour on March 24th, uh, 2018 at 8.30 p.m. Uh, to reduce their carbon emissions and the impact they have on the environment in our daily lives. And whereas all non-essential lighting in City of Columbia City Hall, as well as all, all other public buildings, will be extinguished for one hour to conserve energy and raise awareness about global climate change as part of Earth Hour. Uh, now, therefore, I, Stephen Benjamin, Mayor of the of City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of City Council, do hereby proclaim Saturday, March 24, 2018, uh, between 8.30 and 9.30 p.m. as Earth Hour uh, in the City of Columbia, and urge all of our citizens, businesses, and organizations to participate in this event and to commit to actions to conserve energy and reduce carbon emissions. There's so many different things that uh, are happening all across the city, uh, the city government, and also uh, throughout the city with our private citizens and, and partners uh, to recognize the role that we play in, in preserving uh, our environment. Our fantastic Department of Public Works has, been, has, has helped lead this effort in so many different fronts uh, here at the city. So Robert, I'm not sure if you or your team, who's going to receive this, Mayor Pat? Uh, uh, Sarah, can we receive this on behalf of our staff. I think we have Liz Norris, the AARP. Hey, ladies, I knew you were out there somewhere. <laughs> uh, so excited to have um, the leadership of the um, AARP, um, our, our state president, Ms. Liz Norris, and uh, Ms. Lisa Marie Field, the chair of the AARP Age Friendly uh, City Advisory Council. And Ms. Ann August. Ann August. Uh, <laughs> with us. On the Comet. Along with uh, Lisa here as well. We have Ann August. All right. The, Please. Uh, executive Director for the Regional Transit Authority. Um, thank you for letting us come before you tonight because we really are here to present to you. Um, AARP and the World Health Organization entered into an agreement several years ago to really look at how are we helping cities age. In a way. Let's put your microphone down just a tad better. bit. Yeah, I think we moved better. it a little bit. Yeah, even that's good. better. Yeah, even better. Perfect. Lean yeah. in. <laughs> Lean in. Lean in. <laughs> Lean in. Lean in. Thank in. you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Uh, and, and in a way, for us to try and make sure that we, uh, around this, all cities in, in the United States, are really looking at how do we make sure as we build for the future that we are looking at it in terms of all ages. So those who are. Uh, are getting older, but everything that we do, we feel like if it's good for an 80-year-old, it's good for an 8-year-old as well when it comes to how you develop. So with that in mind, we came before you a few months ago to let you know we were enrolling in this process to become designated as an age-friendly city. That has happened. We are now officially enrolled. And so tonight, we are here to present you um, with this proclamation, and if I may, I'm just going to read it, it's very brief. And it just says that this is to certify that the city of Columbia, South yeah. Carolina, and I'm going to add something, we are the first city in South Carolina to go after this designation. Oh, wow. All right. We've committed to becoming more age friendly under the criteria established by AARP and the World Health Organization, and that we have now been accepted as a member of this network. So we will spend the next two years getting ourselves up and operating so that we will absolutely be able to be seen as a city that is age-friendly. Well, 
Fantastic. Thank you Liz. all for Liz. being able to push this forward for us and with you. Well, Liz, thank you, and thank you to the ARP. Many of you may not know, we spent a lot of time, uh, particularly in the last year or so, with the ARP. Um, they provided uh, technical support, some big picture visionary support uh, as we try to make ourselves an attractive place. We often talk about the creative class and millennials, and not often enough do we talk about the role that the experience class plays in making a, a, a city a very special place to live. So we're uh, excited to be in the vanguard of cities in the first of South Carolina Thank to receive this so designation. Much. Thank you so much. Please. I shall leave. I'm not age friendly yet. He's age friendly. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring up Mr. Hank Chardos, Reverend Chardos, birthright. Uh, the, uh, This afternoon, a 22-year-old came to Birthright of Columbia uh, for a pregnancy test. She has a four-year-old son. The pregnancy test was positive, and now she has two children uh, with no birth father support. Birthright is a pro-life emergency pregnancy service assisting moms who oftentimes are without a birth father to help them and their baby. Uh, services are free and confidential. The Birthright chapter here was formed by my wife and I 38 years ago. So for 38 years, I've been answering the phone and saying, hello, this is Birthright, may I help you? You all have a blue packet, I'm going to ask if you could open it up, because in the blue packet, one of the items, April 15th, is usually designated as the, uh-oh, IRS day, but on April 15th this year, Birthright's going to be holding uh, a baby shower that's hosted by USC nursing students, a very joyous day. The other thing that you have in your packet behind that is pink, so it's easy to distinguish. And I'm going to ask that you look at it because I'm going to read a little bit of it. It's a letter that is dated over a year ago from the mayor to Birthright of Columbia. It says, as the first city in the country to sign on the as a member of Birth 40 Coalition, Columbia is dedicated to taking the necessary steps to implement programs that will improve maternal and infant health in our state. If you jump down to the fourth paragraph, it says the mayor's office and Square Roots will work side by side to implement programs that will streamline the sharing and dissemination of best practices innovative solutions and current evidence-based research regarding how to improve maternal and infant health outcomes in Columbia, South Carolina. 
this program didn't come to Columbia. And so I come now to say the need, because unplanned pregnancies affect all of us, is beyond prevalent. And so I come to say a packet will be delivered to each of you that will ask for your support of implementing what has been looked at to help with regards to maternal and infant health in our city. So I thank Councilman Davis for an opportunity to be on the agenda. Any questions? The items that you all are uh, needing for the ba um, baby shower, um, those be uh, new or slightly used? They can be slightly used because what they are, and I appreciate the question, whether it be a sleeper, whether it be a gown, it's hope. That's what is received by those who come to the baby shower. And where can people donate? They can come to the birthright office. We're on Greg Street, downtown Columbia. It is an opportunity for there to be a connection between those who want to help and those who are needing help. Small little things go a long way. I do thank you for this time. I ask for your prayers for the individual, the 22-year-old that came earlier today. Ask for prayers for the office volunteers who answer the phone and say, hello, this is Birthright, may I help you? But especially help for those who don't know about Birthright. And so that's why Birth 40 has so much importance and impact in the city right here in Columbia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Hank. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would so move the resolution number R2018022, supporting the elimination of all forms of discrimination and violence against women and girls, prompting the health and safety of women and girls, and supporting their being affordable, equal academic, economic, social, cultural, and business opportunities in the city of Columbia. Second. Second. Move the previous question. Or call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank you. And, and Mr. Mayor, I was going to say, Janelle and members from the League of Women Voters are here, and I didn't know if you all wanted to say anything. Okay, Mr. Duvall, you had something, Howard? Well, I was just Same thing. She's, oh. she's from Jura. <laughs> <laughs> We won't hold that against you. Yeah. Howard said you're from Jura. Sure I'm president of the local <laughs> league. As you know, violence against women and discrimination against women are still problems in our society. We just want to say thank you very much for taking this step. Absolutely. Thank you for all the league does. And thank you so much for all the work that the League of Women Voters does. Uh, good, solid uh, community work, um, not just here in Columbia, but across the state and country. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think this is, uh, again, you, Ms. Devine. Um, Your Honor, I'm mean, Your Honor. May it please the court. That's my wife. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, um, I would like to approve resolution number R2018026, approving the honorary naming, um, and we're going to adjust um, this, and I don't know the numbers of the blocks, but Robert can, will help me with this, uh, but the renaming of King Street between Millwood and Preston um, after um, the Judge Mildred W. McDuffie Way. A second. Honorary. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, move and second. Any discussion? With the previous question, the clerk call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, if I could just say we do have um, a sign made up. Um, Judge McDuffie um, couldn't be with us this evening, um, but I will make sure that I deliver that uh, to her. Um, <laughs> Thank 
And th those of you who, who know Judge McDuffie, she is a, a staunch supporter of the city of Columbia and the state of South Carolina. Um, and she has served our city not just as a magistrate, but she has uh, been the chair of the CEZ Inc., which will be celebrating 10 years next month. Um, she has fought for um, equity throughout our city, and she is just an amazing woman. And she's a little bit under the weather right now, so I would just ask that everybody keep her in your prayers. Hey, ben. Thank you, Ms. Devine. Mr. Palin. Our next item, number 31, is resolution number R2018-024, a resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of a not exceeding $3,125,000 General Obligation Bond Anticipation Note Series 2018A or such other appropriate series designation of City of Columbia, South Carolina. Fixing the... Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Just, just, just for clarification, you did say 3.1 million, not 300 million, correct? 3,125,000. I just want to make okay. sure I, could, I couldn't hear it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking big. Yeah. Um, Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. All right. So we're a little bit ahead of schedule, y'all. And we, we um, moved 35. I'm sorry. Can we go, Ms. go down to Ms. ordinance? Do you have something? Uh, 35. Yeah, I, I was just going to, um, on 38, I was going to ask um, is Sarah Schwebel or Brianne Grace here? Um, they were here for 38, so I was going to ask to move that up if they were here so they didn't have to stay, but I don't see them, so. Yeah, did you want a moment to do some things? We can do 35. I mean, well, yeah, we, we can. Just give us a few minutes at some point. Let's, do you want to hit the last three? Yeah, sure. Let's, get, let's, let's take up the last three items. Moved item 35. We'll take, we'll take up the last three items, and, and then we'll, uh, we can't start the zoning public hearing until 7 p.m. sharp, y'all. So we got a few minutes uh, before we can start that, and we're... Yeah, just about 10 minutes off. So, um, what do we pick up? 35. Item 35. All right. Ordinance number 2018-008, authorizing the city manager to execute a seventh amendment to lease between the City of Columbia and Old Boy Properties, LLC, for property consisting of 100 plus or minus acres in Richland County, South Carolina. Is there a Carolina. motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. The clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vines? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 36, ordinance number 2018-009, granting encroachment to Central Midlands Transit Authority, the comet for the use of the right-of-way areas of the 5500 block of Ring Road for the installation and maintenance of a bus shelter, sidewalk, court, so moved. and landscape. Second. Uh, this is at 5590 Ring Road. Uh, moved and second. Any discussion? Move the previous question. Clark Colorell. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Item 37, ordinance number 2018-011. Granting an encroachment to Historic Columbia Foundation for the use of the right-of-way area of the 1700 block of Henderson Street for the installation and maintenance of a wooden utility pole and conduit adjacent to 1650. motion. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Take up 38. We're going to take up 38. And before we uh, go, I think uh, <coughs> Brianne is here. If y'all would come on up. I'll just introduce everybody with you so everybody knows. Hi, I'm Sarah Graytack, one of the residents of Waccamaw Ave. I'm Bree Grace, a resident of Waccamaw Avenue. And I'm Rachel Edwards, I'm also a resident. And we would like speed bumps to but on our streets, we had a, a speed study last year that showed that we were getting cars going as fast as 60 miles per hour down our street wow. at times, and lots of cars going in the 30 to 40 miles per hour at times when kids are walking to and from school. And speed limit is 25. The speed limit is 25, and these cars are just zipping down the street. 
Um, we brought it to the Neighborhood Association last year, and it was decided at the Neighborhood Association meeting last year that the residents of Waccamaw Ave would vote on this. Um, and we went and collected signatures from the majority of residents of the street who supported it. We then turned that to the city. We got signatures, we got speed bump placements back, and got approval from the majority of the residents on the street for the placement of the speed bumps. So I've got the signatures for those things here. Um, and the Neighborhood Association wants to keep meeting to discuss over and over again, but we'd like it to be considered. Um, and it's important to note that we didn't have these problems before speed bumps got placed on the street behind us about two years ago, three years ago on a Disto Ave, and that was not done through the Neighborhood Association. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Mr. And, and I was, was it David, David um, is here as well. Um, and I think Mr. Duvall heard from the Neighborhood Association who, who wanted once it held again. Um, I guess I'd like to know from staff, I, my understanding is staff did do the study and recommended the speed humps, is that correct? Uh, we did the study and it showed that they were speeding on the road, the residents asked for it, and as far as we knew, the, the, there was neighborhood support for it. So mm -hmm. this is just a... Would your your, re your study showed what significant speeding uh, yes, on, on that road. Yes. Okay, um, Mr. Davis, Mr. Duval, Mr. McDowell. Just uh, the the basic question: it, it has not been submitted yet to DOT. This yeah. is not a DOT, not DOT road, so it's we our, don't need their approval. It's our road. It's our road. Yes. So sir. it's our prerogative, unlike with DOT, to go ahead and correct approve it. Our data and research analysis showed us that cars do speed, so forth and so on. That, okay. All right, um, a couple more questions, and we're not in discussion, but we have a motion, I'm sure, at some point. Mr. Mr. McDonald, please. Yeah, yeah, I think you're off, Ed. It's ours, okay. Mr. Mr. Duval. Uh, David, has there been an approval from the Neighborhood Association? I understand that there's some controversy as to whether the Neighborhood Association is sponsored. I have not received anything from the Neighborhood, no, sir. Uh, they actually met a week ago, two weeks ago? Uh, a week ago last Sunday, I think. Have they asked you to wait until they give you an approval? That's my understanding from them, yes, sir. And you have not received that approval? I have not. I would like to defer this until next month. Mr. Um, Rickman, did you have input as well? As well. Okay. Ms. Uh, Ms. Devine. So just part of my concern, and I guess Mr. Duvall, I've, I've not heard from the Neighborhood Association myself, but I've heard from the residents of Waccamaw who are directly impacted by this. Um, my understanding initially was that this was an association that did not meet on a regular basis. Do they have a meeting before our next month's meeting that they can take this up again? They did have a meeting. Unfortunately, there's only one resident of Waccamaw Ave that I know of that is currently a member of the, of the Neighborhood Association. And part of the problem is that the Neighborhood Association meets once a year. The membership forms have not yet been put out for this year. And unfortunately, none of us were available when we heard the time of the meeting to go and present it to the Neighborhood Association again. Um, so none of us were at the meeting. We don't know if it was discussed at the most recent meeting. I suspect it was not, since none of the residents that I know actually made it to the Neighborhood Association meeting, because most of them heard about it three days ahead of time and have not yet gotten forms to even pay to be a member this year. So, so my concern... It was approved last year. Yeah. So, Mr. Duvall, um, you know, I would be okay with maybe an, uh, an affirmative reach out and a discussion so that a decision can be made, but waiting a year for the Neighborhood Association to meet, I think is unrealistic. Oh, I agree with that. Um, and so if the Neighborhood Association met, and I, I'm on that list, so I did get that email, um, and it, was, it said annual meeting. So they let, met last, <laughs> last week. If they don't meet again for another year, we can't hold this up. Is there a motion? Uh, I, I, well, I move approval. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Move the previous question, Clerk Calderell. Mr. Rickman. Mr. McDowell? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Duvall? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. You young people, this is democracy in progress. <laughs> All 
All right, guys, as the mayor mentioned, we cannot start before uh, 7 o'clock, so we have about four minutes. So if we would just stand at ease for a few minutes and we'll get started at 7. Got your batteries and your timer. Well, I took two of the sheets away, so they were all sound on the That's too much. Well, the six sheets is already.
calling you. We're going to um, blaze through uh, the agenda with the exception of um, 34. Of course, 32 is deferred, so we'll go, we'll go to 33. And um, this, this is hold 34 till the very end. Okay? All right. Your Ms. Zoning, Hampton. You have a zoning map amendment this evening at 3319 Millwood Avenue. This is a request to rezone the parcel from PUDC okay. to RS2. This is Dreer High School. All right. All right, guys, we have. Um, Six pages of people who want to speak on this, and a, and a few people downstairs who I'm sure have not yet had an opportunity to do so. Um, so um, everyone obviously uh, would be, a, be afforded the opportunity to speak at this um, public hearing. Um, I've had the opportunity to talk to more of you than I'm sure who wanted to talk to me, and um, and some of you who I not really enjoyed talking to over the last um, several um, months. Uh, it was the um, consensus of this council uh, that we would urge all interested parties, recognizing not just two, interest part two interested parties, but several interested parties, uh, to try and come to some resolution. And it's been very difficult uh, to find uh, that resolution. Obviously, there are a number of, of, um, of, of bodies uh, that have to make a, a, approvals here, and I want to give you all a sense, um, just in, in the interest of, 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 of transparency, inclusion, just tell you exactly where I think every, everyone is without speaking uh, maybe to individual uh, concerns, and then I'm going to um, uh, put some thoughts on the table, and then I'm going to make a motion, and, and we're going to take it from there. We'll let council determine um, how we move forward today, because we will, we will act today, um, and then we'll have a, um, another opportunity to act next month. And I will tell you that uh, between today and April 17th, unless we see you at church or the grocery store or at work or in the courtroom, we will not be seeing you here on this issue again anytime soon, okay? Uh, th this will be dealt with uh, with a degree of, of finality, at least before this body. Uh, the, um, oh. we've uh, um, been part and parcel of or, or witness to uh, a number of, of discussions either um, had face-to-face, -face, some um, via email, some on social media, uh, some in traditional um, media. And as we said uh, this time last year, um, I, I don't believe that we're in any, any position where anyone is in the wrong. I think, I think it's, it's one of the rare situations that we've been able to contemplate here at council where um, well, there are significant and competing interests. Wanting our children to have the opportunity to have a full and rewarding education, recognizing that that education is not just academic, it is also uh, extracurricular in a number of different ways. Uh, incredible arts education, receiving rich in one. I think uh, the, the drear arts education is, is um, um, second to none, I, I dare say, in, the, in this country. Uh, but also recognizing that the, um, the opportunity to participate in extracurricular athletics, um, um, the role that it plays in helping build the full student and the full student experience is also very important. And um, I am not convinced, and neither is um, the vast majority of this council convinced, that we've all done everything we possibly can uh, to resolve this issue. Uh, that there is more time and opportunity for more discussion between tonight and April 17th. And we're willing uh, to provide not only our time, meaning me and Mr. Rickenman, uh, but also the resources and providing a mediator to help us work through uh, these uh, issues. But I want to read a brief statement so it's clear um, uh, where we are. And again, I will tell you that uh, there couldn't be a starker difference between what I expect we'll do here tonight and what could potentially happen 
on April 17th. Uh, we need to be convinced that there has truly been good faith effort by all interested parties in trying to come together and bring this uh, community uh, together. But it is City Council's goal to facilitate the construction of, of practice fields that allow Dreer students to thrive athletically and academically while protecting the quality of life of the adjacent neighborhoods. There appears to be general agreement between the school district and the neighborhood association leaders on the plan for the fields to help achieve this aim. The only thing lacking is a tool to assure the neighborhoods that the plan will be followed as the project proceeds. It's clear you understand that city council cannot, uh, as a matter of law, make a rezoning conditional upon actions by either party. We can only vote up or down. Um, so we're asking, again, the school district and the neighborhood representatives work together, and we're going to invite uh, to the table the leadership of the district, the leadership of Dreer, the leadership of, of both the Melrose and the Heathwood Neighborhood Associations. I want the boosters there to rep represent the parents. And it's probably a place for Shandon as, as well uh, to be at the table uh, to come up with a plan to memorialize exactly what this will look like and also a way to deal with the evolving discussions that may happen over the next several years so we're not going through this every single time. If there's an opportunity for you all to have a meeting of the minds, there's no need for the City Planning Commission or the BOZO or City Council to be involved in this discussion. We do believe that it is in the interest of all the neighborhoods aforementioned and very much in the interest of Dreer um, and um, most importantly in the interest of our students that Dreer remain strong and thriving and continue to do the great things that's done for the city, the state, and this nation, and indeed um, uh, the world. We, um, we're gonna urge you to work together between now and the next meeting of council, which will be April 17th, and, and will be, again, the time when we will deal with this matter with finality to develop a solution, a solution to memorialize the agreement between the parties in a binding form that's acceptable to all parties. Um, as has been the case in the past, um, such a document can be submitted as evidence to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, in their deliberation uh, for the required special exception. My anticipation is we'll probably be in this room, Daniel, or somewhere we can actually sit around the table and look at each other and we're gonna work through this together. We're going to do this between now and April 17th. I wanna ask everyone to come to the table in the spirit of collaboration and compromise and togetherness with our eyes focused on uh, these young people having the academic experience that they deserve that helps them prepared to do the great things that we know God has in store for them. Uh, I um, will, at the appropriate time, uh, unless someone just has to speak, um, I'll, I can make that motion now, I will move uh, for first reading of the district's plan. Uh, I will tell you, well thank you Mr. Duval. I will tell you, and I wanna make sure that I I, I lay the foundation properly, uh, that this first reading is just that, the first reading. We got some serious ground to cover between now and April 17th, because to say there is not unanimity amongst this body would be an understatement, a grave and gross understatement. Let's hammer through a plan. Uh, we will avoid the uh, first week of April, which I know is spring break, uh, but um, we will endeavor to all come around a table and work this out. Again, we will provide um, a talented and skilled mediator to work through what this looks like. And um, that's all I got, guys. That's all I have. I do want to thank you all um, uh, for the various contributions. I, I joked earlier about not wanting to hear from some more of you, uh, but I will say that the, 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 the thoughtful, insightful, 
passionate um, uh, missives that we received in various forms have been appreciated. It's the way democracy is supposed to work. Um, so uh, can we move the previous question? All right. Uh, or call a roll. Mr. Rickerman? Mr. McDowell? Yeah. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Ms. Devine, of course, has recused herself from participating in, the, in this matter. We still have the opportunity for anyone to be heard, I assure you. And we may have to make some type of um, exception next month. If someone wants to have their say then, they can also do it then. But it is, uh, it is a sense of the body uh, that this is the proper action for the night. If you all feel, or any of you feel, that your voice is not represented by one of the specific parties we mentioned tonight, I would urge you to reach out to me and or Mr. Rickenman, and we will figure out how we deal with that moving forward. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Mr. Duval. Uh, I think some of the people might not understand that this does require an ordinance which takes two readings, so we're not we're not delaying anything. It's going to take tonight and April the 17th to move whatever we do. Uh, so um, it's, it's not a delaying tactic. We moved approval. Um, we got the first reading. Uh, and again, I want to encourage uh, the, 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 the groups that I've reached, I've talked to, uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, we got some ground to cover, uh, some real ground to cover. Let's do it. We got um, less than 30 days to hammer it through. I suspect that Ms. Hampton will probably be designated to help pull everyone together. Uh, and um, we'll make it happen. We will not be offended if you don't want to stay the rest of the meeting. Uh, there's not a whole lot left. All right? Anyone got to speak tonight? If you don't have to speak tonight, then we'll, 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 we'll be looking forward to talking to you a lot over the next few weeks. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. McDowell. Yes, sir, Mr. McDowell. I want a personal privilege. I certainly want to thank each of you for. Shh. I want to thank each of you for being here tonight. It's not a win win or lose lose, but it's a time for us to gather around the table. And if we can gather around the table with an air of sensitivity, as our mayor uh, moved us to do in terms, of, in terms of emotion, it provides us an opportunity to talk. Now, I think it's explicitly clear that some of us want to talk. Some of us want to listen. Somewhere I read you have not because you ask not. <laughs> and it would seem to me that this motion and the acceptance of this motion gives us an opportunity to gather around the table with the same common menu so that we make this happen. Remember, April 17th is coming and there will be another vote. Let's make this real for communities. Let's make this real for our students. I had an opportunity to talk to some of our soccer students right over there. They didn't convince me, but they sure touched my heart. <laughs> and it's, it's about them. But it's also about this city of ours and making sure that vision and that dream for our city holds up and stands clear as a beacon on the top of a hill. So the work is still yet to be done, and there's a lot to do. Let's move forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr.
I, I just want to take I want to take a couple minutes and I want to thank the folks that I spoke with over the last couple of days. It's probably been some of the best conversations since this has started. Um, and I feel like I need to say that, you know, and I hope that we all can can learn from this. And hopefully as we're moving forward, I voted no tonight because I've been asking for an agreement because that's what we needed to do to bring harmony to this so that we can have a path moving forward that's clearly designed so that nobody's in this situation in the future. Um, what we've seen on on all sides is 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 emotions and unfortunately sometimes our emotions get ahead of ourselves but we have a great opportunity and i hope we don't waste these next 30 days together where we can we can resolve this and everybody can go on because for 14 years since 2003 there's been harmony and we need to get back to that so i hope that that we'll all work together. And I thank y'all for coming tonight. And I appreciate the phone calls, the people I've spoken to <laughs> over the last night. I don't know where Michael is, but we, we've had some interesting conversations over the year. And we had a, a wonderful conversation today about how to move forward. Um, so I would just ask that we continue to take that spirit and move forward. It's time to put Facebook and Twitter and all those fun items we like to use away and do it face to face. Thank yeah. you. And we would not be offended if you guys went home right now, okay? We need to vote. We're not done. We need to vote on the last thing. Let's get back. No, we still have a vote. No, yeah, no. He's just letting him go. Oh. Steve is, Steve is ah. yeah, he's, he's, he's complimented out. Right. And he's coming, but he's going to come back. Yeah, probably. Did you um, see Miss August? I did, yeah. We're going to get it back. Okay. Yeah. Guys, we still have a little bit more of a meeting, so if you all could exit quietly, please, we would appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. All right, ready? Okay. All right, Ms. Hampton, if you would move forward. Again, y'all, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. If y'all could just keep it down just a little bit so we can finish our meeting. <laughs> Love the enthusiasm. <laughs> okay, Miss Hampton, if you would move forward with item 34. Certainly. You have one final item on the zoning public hearing agenda. It's annexation comprehensive map amendment and zoning map amendment at 2050 Wood Creek Farms Road. Okay. This is a request to annex assign the land use classification of UEMF and a zoning of PUDR. I move approval there, of uh, ordinance what, number 2018 Oh, Is there anybody here to speak for or against item 34? Is anybody See, here to speak on this item? I, you might be lost in the crowd somewhere. <laughs> move approval. I'm seeing none. Is there a motion? Move approval. It's been moved and property oh, second. Building. If any discussion? Man. Seeing none, if the Press clerk will read the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Ms. Devine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Thank you. That concludes your zoning public hearing. Thank you so much, Krista. Um, Mr. Palin? Nothing. Well, the committee report. Either way. Committee report. Yeah, I didn't know either. Mr. Palin, uh-huh. Yep. Uh, next item is consideration of matters discussed during the work session. Any, are any issues uh, um, 
I have none for consideration. Next, we have a uh, committee reports. Mr. Rickerman. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Rickerman. Um, we had the opportunity today to have a public safety meeting, and I, I believe all of y'all were given uh, a proposed ordinance. Um, I would like for us to go ahead as a council um, move forward so that we can advertise, uh, that we can hold public meetings, so maybe even some workshops, depending on what council members want to participate, so that we can bring all the stakeholders in and begin the process to move forward on the extended hours. I think what you'll find that's been provided uh, um, is a real change from what we had before and is really going to help us move forward. Now, I say that with there's several other pieces that we need to address in this. Um, and I think one of the things that we emphasize today, too, is that we need to take all our powers that we have to influence the, the state house and the judicial system, too, about putting out repeat offenders and, and giving teeth to people carrying unlawful weapons. Um, you know, because this is a piece of violence that we can't tolerate. I think the other piece that we're going to have to look at is, is as we move forward with the comprehensive zoning, too, is looking at the different ways that we can address it so that we don't end up with a concentration area like we're seeing now and having things that are, are a little bit more spread out and a little more defined. Um, so I think there are pieces that we're going to have to take in, in, in um, in succession to this, but I think we've we've made great strides, and I believe what we have bef before us, and obviously, you know, we'll hear from the public input, gives the police department the ability to do what they need to do, and also gives the folks who deserve to have that opportunity, who have been in business for 20 years, to stay in business. Thank you, Mr. Rickman. Um, that, so that's that's a motion, or is this just starting the process? I guess we have to approve the committee recommendation or, or, or set public hearing? Just, they just referred it you back to the full the committee. We have to set, a, we, we need gotta, to go ahead and schedule a public we need hearing to schedule so we can a public advertise. Hearing. Yeah. So they got to advertise. How's, so how's, uh, is it 15 days? 15 days. So I guess we'll set the public hearing for uh, April 17th. Uh, April 17th. Works for me. Uh, Ms. Devine. Um, I just wanted to add, um, I know that when we took up this ordinance years ago, um, there was some concern regarding the timing because of the industry that is affected. Typically, if we had a public hearing at this time, then a lot of them would be working. So I would just add or offer that we consider maybe more than one public hearing at two different times so that uh, people who work could still come to an evening public meeting, but those who are working at the time of our evening public meeting might come to a, a you can do nine. Two and seven. Yeah. Two and seven, yeah. yeah. Two, like two p.m. and seven p.m. Or two a.m. Yeah. and seven p.m. You, you, you'd have to ask permission, Howard. Tell Mr. <laughs> tell Mr. Duval the meetings at two a.m. so he can be here uh, at, at two a.m. But uh, two p.m. and the seven p.m. public hearing, so we I can that, uh, make sure. And, and we, we, we can, can limit it. We, uh, yeah. I think we'll get a lot done. And, okay. and the idea is to bring but, some of the stakeholders together first, uh, sure, and have some workshops so that we can have some dialogue. I want to thank the uh, the um, public safety committee for. Uh, for your work, look forward to digesting this and, and having also having some feedback. Um, so establishing the public hearing um, for April 17th uh, at 2 p.m. and at 7 p.m. Ms. We Madam Clerk. The, um, budget matters that we'll be discussing at 2 p.m. during the work session. So Still. how are we going? Still. I think, I think we'll, we'll, we'll just, just as we insert it on the agenda, we'll insert it on the agenda. We'll just plan, just bring, bring some snacks, y'all. We're going to muscle through. April 17th. No All right. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. All right. Uh, uh, now, uh, I know most of the folks who signed up to speak uh, were here to speak on the on the drear uh, rezoning issue. Uh, anyone else who signed up to speak um, at this time? Yes, sir. We do have an additional. Ms. Juliet Greenlee. Okay, Ms. Greenlee. Let's start stairs. What I'm talking about. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Mayor. Hey, how are you? My name is Juliet Greenlee. Yes, I'm the Vice President of Stocks Terrace Community. I got a letter at our last meeting for explanation, and I don't have one. So I'm coming to City Council for it. Yes, 
it um, it's in reference to your rezoning on um, Mason Road and all that, and I know all about that. How, the, what I'm, uh, what she's seeking, and I am seeking an explanation of. One owner on Bowling Avenue got a letter. One on homeowner, which I'm a homeowner on Bowling Avenue too. So mm -hmm. this is what I'm seeking an explanation for. Can you hand that to Ms. Hampton? Let her take a look yeah. and see. We send letters to properties directly adjacent to the subject property. So not all parcels necessarily on that street are directly adjacent to so the what property. Does that mean? It has to be right next to, I you mean, have to be. What does that mean this to, is, your, and to your rezoning of the property on Mason Road? The, we, we notify property owners who, whose property are yeah. next to the property. That it's being rezoned. That it's being, okay. that the, the request okay. is coming so okay. that you can be aware. You could you could you could have called me. You you could have called me and bossed me around like that huh? like you have for all these years. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions you have? You, you call you call me directly and, and okay. um. All right. Just keep just keep your daughters off my tail. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Julian. Anyone else sign up to speak who needs to speak now? Ms. Burgess. Hey, Ms. Burgess. You got to come up here. <laughs> Let's see if anyone else is signed up that's not drear or not. It's drear, 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 drear. You playing musical, musical chairs tonight? Because I've seen you in about drear, three drear, different drear, spots drear, in this drear, room drear. tonight. <laughs> that means that I'm enjoying you guys. Good evening. Hey, Ms. Regis. Um, I'm here to speak for some of my neighbors who ride public transportation, and not necessarily because they want to, but because they have to. Um, I have neighbors who do not own cars. I have neighbors who uh, have physical disabilities. I have neighbors who are near my age, some of them a little older, and they no longer drive. Um, and they need public transportation. But what happened, or what has happened, is that when the city and the county needed a penny tax, they came to our neighborhoods. They came to other poor neighborhoods. And I'm saying poor, not so much that our neighborhood is poor, but let's say, um, neighborhoods that are not um, Shandon, since we just had a lot of Shandon residents here, are not um, neighborhoods that are not as upscale as some others. They came to our neighborhoods and they asked, they came where the penny tax was used or, or needed, they said. Um, the communities who actually use the penny tax and who need the penny tax were asked to support it, and they did. They actually supported the penny tax. You can check your tax records, you can check your tax books, and you'll see where that support came from. Uh, communities were, these communities were promised safe, clean, timely, working public transportation if they supported that tax. And when I say working, I mean buses that ran through their neighborhoods, okay? Now, based on the commitment from the city, based on that commitment and promise from the county, these people supported it. Now, because of certain budget requirements, some of those buses have to be eliminated. And guess where those buses are being eliminated from? the very people and the very communities that need and use them. 90% of the bus riders in the city of Columbia and Richland County are minority bus riders. Check your records. The uh, comet knows this. And 
if you check the records that are, the, the roots that are being eliminated, totally eliminated, they're going straight through these neighborhoods. People who use the bus um, going from Rosewood Hills all the way down Harden Street to the CVS on the other side of Richmond Memorial Hospital. The people who live there use the bus to go from one end to the other, to visit people at the hospital, to visit relatives, to shop, um, to go to the hospital. Um, but what has happened? Is that a buzzer for me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, okay. But what I want you to know is that the people who actually need and use the bus are being um, discriminated against. Yeah. That's not yeah. good. We, um, I know you want to say something, no, Devon. Devon. We, we got a very comprehensive report from the Comet earlier today, and that and actually got some um, several questions and, and concerns uh, yes. asked, and some sure. that were addressed, and some that that I think we, we're still going to get some more feedback on. Uh, I'm not sure as as Ms. Burgess had a chance to see the full presentation um, by the Comet. If not, I, I, I have okay. Well, um, well, one thing about the um, the report from the Comet is sure. that. The people who ride the bus yes, have not been told yet yes, about the uh, elimination of sure. routes through their yeah. neighborhoods. Yeah. People yes, who ride the bus get off from work at 11 o'clock. Sure. Most of the buses that are being, the times are being reduced to before sure. 11 o'clock. We have had to take some of our neighbors to work on the weekend already because their buses don't go through the neighborhood like they used to. And there's something wrong with that. If you have people who are working and who get off at 11 o'clock and the buses stop at 10.45 or 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock, there's something wrong with that. People can't get to anywhere in this neighborhood because of that. Thanks, Ms. Rogers. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Has anyone else uh, sent speak? Yes, I'm Can sorry. Can I just add one thing, though? Um, so one of the things that we did talk about today Mrs. Furgis was that um, the the proposed changes are, are not set yet. They are actually at the point where they're doing public hearings, and so the, the comment is working to get the word out. We will also push it out for our PIO, um, and the Riders Association has already um, met and gave input. And so to your concern, we, we did ask that question, but what we are also encouraging people, and if you could share with the folks that you're talking about that are riding the bus, that they need to come to the public hearings and make sure their voices are heard. Um, thank you, um, Ms. Devine, my dear sweet niece. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but um, did, were you aware of the fact that this has been voted on because my dear sweet husband is on the board? So I'm working against him too. <laughs> but I asked the question specifically. Yeah. My understanding is it was it was voted to do the public hearings. Yes. And but it has not been voted to approve the changes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. That, that thank you. All. all right. Thank thank y'all. All right. There is a board member sitting okay. over yes. there. Okay. That's all right. I'm if sorry. Miss, if we'll hey. <laughs> Adjourned. <laughs> Mr. Yes, sir. It's your, it's your, your microphone. You can't have oh. six people talking at once. Yes, sir. Please. My name is Walter Durst. I'm the vice president of the Midlands Transit Riders Association. And from 2013 to 2015, I was the president. Um, you can blame me if you want to, but I was worked with the Comet very closely to develop routes within the city and um, I voted for the penny tax. I worked hard to uh, get the penny tax passed. The Midlands Transit Riders Association was um, formed um, out of that work for the penny tax. Um, to suggest that the Comet is working to um, eliminate routes within a certain segment of the population district within the city is inaccurate and, to me, offensive. Um, route, the, the route that they were referring to was Route 22, which um, goes from Rosewood over to Richland Memorial Hospital.
to suggest that um, you won't be able to get to Richland Hospital is inaccurate because there are there's another route that will do that. Um, I know that there has been some discussion regarding um, getting people to Midlands Tech in the, uh, on the weekends and because they are, um, the Comet has, has suggested to uh, eliminate the Crosstown Bus 88 on weekends. So um, someone has said, how are you going to get to Midlands Tech on weekends? There's two other bus routes that will go to Midlands Tech on weekends. Um, you know, from a, a point of personalness on this, um, we are a, a city of a lot of different people, a lot of ethnicities. Um, my parents taught me to treat everybody the same. You know, everybody here, um, you know, may, may come from a different background, different education, but I represent the Midlands Transit Riders Association because I believe that we are all one city and not little segments of cities. You're supposed to say one Columbia at that point, but you miss, you, you, you miss. I'm sorry? We, we, we agree, Mr. Darris, oh, okay. we agree. Because let me just say, I don't know if I have enough time to do this. I probably not. You'll, you'll, you'll hear it. But, uh -huh. um, my uh, grandmother taught school in Alabama. She taught white kids in the morning and black kids in the afternoon. The Klan came along and burned a cross in their front yard. They shot up their windows. Now this is around 1900, okay? Um, my uh, grandfather was the judge in the town and he put all the Klansmen in jail, which is very unpopular. Ever since then, I've been taught, treat everybody the same. I am not a racist, and I don't believe the comet is a racist. So I just ask that you, um, you know, take some other people's comments with a grain of salt. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, sir, Mr. McDowell. Just want to reiterate um, something Ms. Fridges said just a moment ago. And that is, uh, we heard this detailed report uh, in, in detail uh, in, in our work session. But I think what I hear Ms. Fergus saying and what is, and what we talked about, the question that I asked, of course, is how do you, how do you get that word out to folk in the neighborhood? And I think what Ms. August and members of the committee said was that there were going to be, as Tamika indicated, Ms. Devine, there were going to be public hearings. And I want to reiterate that because that's going to be important in the life of the decisions that's going to be made. Because as I heard it today, there were no decisions being made. We're still tweaking it from what I understand. We're still tweaking it, and uh, it's going to give us an opportunity for residents to voice their opinion. Thank That's what I. Thank yeah, you. I'm, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rev. And, and and obviously all of our comments and questions earlier at the at the uh, work session are on the record as well. And I, I was happy with the depth uh, of questioning, and um, um, we still got some work to do. But I want to thank everyone for their leadership and and and, and input uh, as well. Uh, we have one more um, citizen who, who signed to speak, Mr. Parker. Good evening, Mayor. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Members of the City Council. My name is Dr. D. A. Dennis Sr. I'm the president, uh, the, the the president the of you. the local org organizing committee. I'm here in Columbia, and the first thing I wanted to do was recognize uh, Councilman Sam Davis uh, for coming through with something that we've been having an issue with for a while. Uh, which had to do with the utilities of a building that we use as a headquarters at 4910 um, Main Street. And uh, the councilman was able to pull his resources together and to help us out of a situation um, that would have basically just shut us down because we, wasn't able to, we wouldn't have been able to serve the community as we do. So just you'll know um, exactly what we do. Uh, we are a, a committee and an organizing committee that deals with the community based off of uh, three points. Education, treatment, which deals with mental health, and also um, 
uh, behavior modification, and also redirection. We deal strictly with our youth uh, more than anything else. Um, our, our young adults and our elderly or our elders are very important to us. However, our youth are the ones that our future is going to carry us along. And the reason why I'm coming to you today is basically to let you know who we are and what it is that we would like to do um, in partnership with you. Uh, we give ourselves in service um, to our community, um, in, in service for our elders so that they can help to translate their words into life as well as their teachings into actions. And hopefully our youth will find joy through that in serving and living where we are. Um, we also teach individuals to mirror their souls in their own presence as well as community so they'll know where they are and once they've come in the long road they ought to be going. And so to us it's very important for us to be able to partner with the city council, with the our mayor, so that we can do some things for the community, specifically our communities, whether it's our African American community and also those that are less fortunate. Because for whatever reason, we always get lost in translation. And so we want to be able to provide that medium uh, for us to be able to work together. And we will be back, um, not just discussing issues and things that are wrong, but also recognizing council members and others for what they do uh, right and also to help the community um, in the way that Mr. Sam Davis has done, as well as others that are here in the room. And so I want to just give, give notice that we are here uh, as a local organizing committee, the LOC, as, that is better known as. And again, I'm the president, and we have our second vice president um, here as well. And we will be back, and we want to be able to partner with you to see what we can do for our community so the community doesn't have to be policed by others, but we can actually police our own. Would you say your name again for the record? Uh, Dr. D.A. Dennis. All right. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you, Dr. Dennis. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. Appreciate you. All right. Um, I have no one else who's signed up to speak. Um, is, is, um, two announcements. Please make your two announcements. One is just a reminder that tomorrow is um, Together We Can Read. We are celebrating 10 years. And uh, this awesome. year's book is The Freedom Ship of Robert Smalls. Each of you have a book in your book boxes, so do not leave here without your book. Um, and I hope that you guys know which, which um, schools you're reading at. But tomorrow, we'll be all reading collectively in every single third grade class in Richland 1 at 9 a.m. So that's my first announcement. And then the second announcement is Saturday is the Midlands Heart Walk in the City of Columbia. Mr. Mayor, I'm proud to announce that we have a team of, uh, last I checked, 40 members strong that will be walking on um, as part of the city team on Saturday morning, but it is not too late for anyone to join us. If you'd like to, you can actually go to Midlands Heart Walk and look for the City of Columbia team and join us and meet us out um, at Colonial Life Arena at 9 a.m. on Saturday. And then after you lose some weight, you can register it with Way in Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> just one announcement, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, let me just announce to all of my colleagues and for those of you who are uh, would like to participate, Jones McDonald uh, Association is having our annual, uh, we haven't done this in a long time, on the 31st of March, we're having our Easter brunch. Our Easter brunch, uh, that's at, yeah, Drew Wellness, what time? 11 a.m. We need you to come and be a part of this, of this activity. This is something we used to do some years ago. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, uh, the help of the Furges and the Jones McDonald Family Association, we were able to uh, get it going again. And we certainly want to invite our colleagues to come and be a part of this, of this, uh, this, uh, in, this informative activity. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? With the previous question, Clerk Colorado. Aye. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Have a good evening. Thank you.